Verse 2, he said, David said, my help comes from the Lord. If I don't have his help, I'm doomed. If you don't have his help, you're doomed. But you got to help her tonight. God is my help. And God is your help. Thank you, Jesus, for being our helper tonight. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I don't tell you that testimony to get your sympathy. I don't want that. I don't need that from you. What I'm telling you is to, is to preach that to give God the glory and to give God the honor. Hallelujah to the Lamb. That God takes our test and turns them into a testimony. Say praise the Lord, church. So far, so good. It doesn't look like she'll be taken off in cuffs. Hallelujah. Say praise the Lord, Sister Christina. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is on the throne. So everything's going to be all right. I don't want you to start worrying about it too. Then now I've got not only to deal with my wife's worry, but your worry too. No, I'm giving God glory today. I give God the glory today. He's an awesome God. Sets upon the throne. Amen. But you know what it's like. Just, we ain't got time for that. You know what I'm talking about. You ever been in a situation in your life, you, you know you're trying to do this and do that, and then something else comes up. He just said, we ain't got no time for that. We ain't got no time for that. Praise the Lord. But I just don't have no time for that. And she doesn't have any time for that. But guess what? We got to deal with it. You ever been there? Are you going through anything tonight? You're fighting one battle, then all of a sudden something else comes. And you look at it and say, I ain't got time for that. But I guess God has looked at my life and said, I'm strong enough. That God has looked at her life and says, she's strong enough to handle the situation. Give the Lord praise in the house, church. My help comes from the Lord. He's helped me so many times. Helped my family so many times. Helped this church so many times. My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Hezekiah would have said that as he looked out there and he saw the armies about to invade him. Amen. All he can do is go to God in prayer and trust God to turn that test into a testimony. Now you understand that? The prophet Isaiah hears Hezekiah's concern in verses 1-2. Hallelujah. When he said, I look to the mountains, from which comes my help? My help comes from the Lord. And so Isaiah responds. He says this back to Hezekiah. In the beginning in verse 3, Isaiah says, He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Say praise the Lord. Isaiah is telling him as a prophet, he's saying, guess what? You get tired. You get tired, but God doesn't get tired. I get tired, but God doesn't get tired. He neither slumbers nor sleeps. Do you ever get tired? Anybody here ever get tired? Now, TJ, don't lift your hand. You're not old enough to get tired. So, said, oh, pastor, I'm just so tired of life. You're not old enough to be doing that. Marley, don't lift your hand. Don't say you're tired. Praise God. But when you've gone through some things, you've gone through some things in your life, some hard, th hard times and difficult times and battles in your life. You've been sick in your body and all kinds of things have come to you and financial difficulties come to you. And the pressures of life are just overwhelming. you got family problems and all kinds of things going on with your children. What do you need? You need God's help. And when you get so tired, you don't know if you can keep on going just because you're, you're just wore out. It's not that you're a spiritual failure. You're just tired. You're just getting weary. And you look at your life and you say, Lord, I'm just a miserable failure. And God says, you're not a failure. You're just tired of fighting. Give the Lord praise in the house. But God doesn't get tired. God is my help. God turns my test into a testimony. He does not slumber. Amen. 
Praise God, brothers and sisters. Life, you know, it'd be wonderful, wouldn't it, if life was a vacation? A continual vacation, but it's not. And we get tired. But God doesn't get tired. Isaiah said to Hezekiah, you don't worry about it. God doesn't need to take a nap. God doesn't need to sleep. God doesn't slumber. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Verse 4, he says, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. He's got unending energy, unending power. I get tired. I get weary. But I can go to him and get that supernatural strength and energy to keep on and keep on and keep on. He, the one that neither slumbers nor sleep, can take my test and turn it into a testimony. Praise the Lord, church. Long time ago, when, when I came up in the church, first got in the church, they had testimony services, you know. And most of the time, those were on a Sunday night where we would pass the mic around and people get an opportunity to testify about what the Lord had done for them, you know. And we did that for a long time. Here in this church, amen, but after a while we had to stop doing that because a lot of times the people get up and give the devil more glory than they gave Jesus. Oh, I just want to tell you, it's been so hard. It's been, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Oh, oh, and just, you know, whine and cry and you know, just talk about how, what the devil's doing. Oh, the devil, he's got me right where he wants me, you know. <laughs> I'm going, man, that's not a testimony. That's glorifying the enemy. Say amen, church. Praise the Lord. So we took the mic out of the church's hand, and we said, if you got a testimony, write it down. That way I can read through it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. One pastor in those type of services, he had a cowbell. And when they stand up and start testifying, you know, uh, if it got too long or they went the wrong direction, he'd hit the cowbell. Ding! And that was a signal to everybody, it, that's enough. We've had enough of your testimony, praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But we have a testimony tonight. The testimony of Jesus Christ in our life. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Maybe someday we'll give you an opportunity to testify. But I'm bringing a cowbell with me. <laughs> Amen, brothers and sisters. God is good. Yeah, sometimes they start testifying. They give the enemy more, more praise than they gave God praise. Or they start preaching. I said, it's not your opportunity to preach. We don't need you to preach. We just need you to stand up and talk about how God gave you a victory. How God met your need. How God healed your body. How God gave you an overcoming testimony in your life. Did anybody here have a testimony? If you do, lift your hand. You got a testimony. If you don't have a testimony, you're not breathing. Hallelujah to the Lamb. God is, has unlimited energy. He does not slumber or sleep. Verse 5, the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. What does that mean? He's the shade upon your right hand. The right hand is the hand of the sword. And your hand, the right hand that holds the sword, gets weary in battle. You get tired of holding that sword in battle. So God says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little bit of comfort. I'm going to cover that hand that gets weary in battle. I'm going to put a shade on it to, and so that you'll have strength in that hand to continue to fight. Have you ever been in a situation where you've been weary in the battle? Amen. Praise God. We have a testimony in the Bible about a man who was fighting with a sword. He fought with that sword so hard that his hands, they had to take his hands and open his hands up. His hands became a part of that sword. But God says when you're like that, you've been fighting and you've been fighting and you've been fighting and you've been fighting. You've got the sword in your hands and you've been defeating this enemy and this enemy. And your, your hand is getting weary, it's getting tired. God said, I'm going to put a shadow over your hand. Woo, hallelujah to the Lamb. 
My sword hand gets weak. Look at your neighbor and say, my sword hand gets weak. Now, I don't know why some of yours would get weak because you never carry a sword. But I'm preaching to some tonight that you got the sword in your hands every day. And you're fighting the good fight of faith. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You're not a spectator in this kingdom. You are a participator in this kingdom. And you've got your sword drawn and you're fighting the good fight of faith. And God says, I'm going to bring that shadow over that weak hand and give you some respite. In the name of Jesus. Verse 6. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. He's a testimony right here. The, the sun's not going to give I'm not going to get sunstroke. Hallelujah. I'm not going to experience sunstroke. The heat of the sun's not going to kill me. And I'm not going to experience being moonstruck. That means to be a lunatic. So God keeps me sane. When I think I'm about ready to lose my mind. Now I'm not preaching anybody here like that. But sometimes when you get so overwhelmed in the test. You might think you're going to lose your mind. But God says you're not going to be moonstruck. You're not going to go crazy. You're not going to be a lunatic. Because God is with you. God is your help. Now don't lift your hands because I don't want everybody to know this. But how many of you have ever been in a situation you thought you were absolutely going to lose your mind? And God stepped in. And you're not crazy tonight. At least not totally. Say praise the Lord, church. Oh, I love him tonight. I might have lost my mind, but God. You might have lost your mind, but God. God intervened and helped you. He is your help in time of trouble. He turned your test into a testimony. And I know, I know this is real basic. And I know it's real simple. And I'm not preaching the miracle of all to you tonight. I'm not preaching you the chariot of God tonight. I get it. I'm just bringing you a good old basic simple message. To let you know that God can turn your test into a testimony. Give the Lord praise in the house. I'm not sunstruck or moonstruck. That means he's there all the time for me. In the daytime or when I sleep. God is helping me. He's defeating my enemies when I'm asleep. When I don't even, I don't have to do anything. God is at work, hallelujah, fixing the problem. God is at work at night, to, intervening to step in and turn the situation around. Say praise the Lord. Some situations, and I think about the loss of a child, the death of a child, the death of a spouse, etc., the death of a family member, all that pressure that comes upon that person's life, you know, all these things. But God says, I'm with you. I'm with you in the daytime. I'm with you in the night seasons of your life. When you're lonely, you're lonely. Maybe you're by yourself and there's nobody but God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And you might have your husband next to you, but you're still lonely. You might have your wife next to you, but you're still lonely. Praise the Lord. But God is with you in your daytime. And God is with you when you're sleeping at night. He knows exactly where you are. God is going to turn your test into a testimony. Verse 7. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Oh, now he goes into the other areas of your life when you're having problems with your soul. When you're having problems with that old sin nature that's on the inside of you. That old sin nature is starting to take over your life. But he said, I'm going to raise up my spirit. And my spirit, the spirit of God is going to rise up in you and overcome and preserve you, preserve your soul in that time when your old sin nature is trying to nominate and control you. Give God praise in the house. In verse 8, he says, The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Hallelujah. They would take this very passage 
and you study the, the mezuzah. A mezuzah was a little round cylinder that had the name Shaddai on the back of it. Shaddai is a name for God, which means Almighty. And they were commanded by the Word of God to take and put in that cylinder. Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. <laughs> 